We saw in the last video that plants need to carry out photosynthesis in order to survive. The rate at which they can do this though is dependent on four main things. Light intensity, temperature, the concentration of carbon dioxide in the air, and the amount of chlorophyll that the plants have. So in this video we'll explore how each of these affects photosynthesis, and how we can show it using graphs. Let's start with chlorophyll. As chlorophyll is the pigment within chloroplasts that absorbs the light energy that's needed for photosynthesis, it makes sense that if plants have less of it, then they won't be able to carry out as much photosynthesis. Different plants will naturally have different amounts of chlorophyll, but the level within an individual plant can vary due to disease, for example, infection with tobacco mosaic virus, environmental stress, or lack of nutrients, like water. All of these things tend to damage the chloroplasts, and so they can't make as much chlorophyll anymore. When we talk about limiting factors for photosynthesis though, we're normally referring to light, carbon dioxide, and temperature. And we put these on the x-axis when we use graphs. So here we have light intensity on the x-axis, and rate of photosynthesis on the y-axis. And what we can see is that as light intensity increases, so does the rate of photosynthesis, which makes sense because photosynthesis relies on energy from the sun. But it only increases up to a point. At this point, where the line flattens out, we can say that it's plateaued. And this means that there must be something else limiting photosynthesis, such as carbon dioxide concentrations or temperature. We can draw a similar graph for carbon dioxide. As carbon dioxide is one of the reactants for photosynthesis, the more of it a plant can get, the higher the rate. But just like light, after a while it plateaus, because when carbon dioxide is plentiful, something else will become the limiting factor. The graph for temperature is slightly different though. Although the rate does rise with temperature initially, because the enzymes involved can work more quickly, and the molecules can move faster, after a while, the rate starts to drop again as the enzymes involved begin to denature. By about 45 degrees, they're fully denatured, and the rate of reaction falls to zero. You'll sometimes see that more than one limiting factor is shown within a single graph. For example, this graph has two curves on it, so it's representing two different experiments. Both of them show how light intensity affects photosynthesis, but one of them was done at 15 degrees Celsius, and the other was done at 25 degrees Celsius. By comparing these two curves, we can see that it must have been the temperature that was the limiting factor in the 15 degree experiment, because when the temperature was raised to 25 degrees, the maximum rate of photosynthesis was much higher. Sometimes you might see a graph that shows all three factors. For example here, we can see that both curves have the same temperature, but the carbon dioxide concentration is 10 times higher in this top curve. So it must be the carbon dioxide concentration that's limiting the rate of photosynthesis of this lower curve. So now that we understand the conditions required for a high rate of photosynthesis, we can think about how farmers might try to artificially create these conditions so that their plants can grow well. For example, in colder climates, farmers often place their crops in greenhouses which trap the sun's heat, and so increase the temperature. They can also provide artificial light, so that photosynthesis can continue all through the day and night. Sometimes farmers might pump carbon dioxide into the greenhouse, or use something like a paraffin heater, which releases both heat and carbon dioxide as it burns. Another benefit of greenhouses is that they're enclosed, so pests and pathogens can't get to the plants as easily. In addition to all of this, farmers may also use fertilizers to ensure that the plants have enough essential minerals, and pesticides that kill any unwanted bugs. As you can imagine though, everything that we've discussed here can cost a lot of money, so farmers are going to have to weigh up this extra cost versus the extra yield that they'll hopefully get from their crops. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, 
exam style questions and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.